Okay, so we're moving on to part two of the Korean work according to your textbook. So this is from page 52 onwards. Uh, to what extent was the Korean War more of a civil war than a proxy war? Um, now, if you do not know what is a civil war, you should really pause right now and go and Google what's a civil war. But to make it very simple for you, it is actually a, a, a local war. That means to say it's fought like Singaporeans versus Singaporeans. That would be a civil war. Okay, so for Korean, it's South versus North. So definitely it counts as a civil war. But was it more of a civil war or rather than a proxy war? Now, for proxy war, it means to say that it is being fought by um, two opposing sides. Um, using proxies. For example, if you go back to the I Not Stupid example which I used for the Cold War uh, lecture, their proxies were the children then. Okay, but in this case, this is physical fighting. La. So in this case, when USA is so-called fighting USSR, they are making use of South Korea, representative of the Democratic side, and North Korea representative um, of the Communist side to fight each other. So these two become proxies rather than um, proxies of these uh, respective individual superpowers. So the Korean War, was it really more of something that was a fight between North and South Korea or was it a fight between um, USA and USSR? So this is what this part of the chapter attempts to explain. Now the thing about this textbook is that right the, the events that are being discussed, if you're reading the textbook, right, um, it sort of overlaps with whatever we discussed earlier. And in fact, it even goes back a little bit to make things a bit clearer. La. So basically, according to the timeline, it can get very confusing. So that's why I would recommend that you go look at the timeline inside the resource package as well. Okay, and here you go. So um, if you... We are some... We have already discussed USSR exploding atomic bomb, Sino-Soviet alliance as well. So now we're going to go back to even in between 1947 around that period of time and to look at what is actually USA's stance regarding uh, Korea. Then we'll come back to the NSC 68 report. So there's a bit of jumping here and there. If you're confused, please constantly refer to the timeline so that you know what's going on uh, during what time and when. Okay, Okay, coming back here. So um, this is one of the good questions to consider why did Americans answer the call to defend a country they never knew and a people they never met. So if you consider the um, O-level question for this, hang on, I'm going to give it to you. So if you consider this question, uh, the issue here is um, why the USA was involved in the Korean War. Okay, that is the issue. Given factor is stopping the invasion of South Korea. So basically the issue to think about, one of the issues that you can think about is why did the USA get involved? Uh, you can also think about why did the USSR get involved and these are two main issues that you can look at as well. Given factor is stop the invasion of South Korea. We're going to be looking at that as well and you will realize that that isn't exactly the, it was one of the reasons but it definitely wasn't really the main reason why they actually chose to um, chose to involve themselves in South Korea, okay? Now, uh, lead up to the outbreak of the Korean War, we will touch on a few things that we have mentioned earlier in the previous part of the lecture. Okay, the first one, withdrawal of the USA and the Soviet Union. They plan to withdrew, withdraw from U uh, Korea uh, during this period of time, okay, 1948, 1949. Uh, this tells us that during this period of time, actually, they were not very interested in Korea. Both Soviet Union and the USA as well. And some of the explanation can actually be found in the previous part of the lecture when we looked at um, when we looked at uh, uh, the reason why USSR was involved was only because they managed to successfully uh, explode the atomic bomb. They also managed to successfully uh, have an alliance with China, who became communist. Okay, but otherwise, actually, it wasn't much of an interest to them at all. Okay, especially more so for USA. Basically, for USA stance uh, is that as long as you are not interested, I am not interested. Okay, something to that extent. So, as long as uh, Soviet Union, they are not interested in spreading communism to this country, it wouldn't be of concern to the USA at all. Um, so, from limited support from the USA and the Soviet Union from this period of time, uh, North Korea was able to actually get some form of support from Stalin and Mao. But um, as one of the issues that we can actually look at for 
SBQ would be, did Stalin really want to intervene in Korea? And you would realize that through some of the sources that you will be seeing, is that they didn't, he actually didn't really want to involve himself in Korea. What he wanted to do was to pass this responsibility to Mao Zedong. Okay, so yeah, whenever you see the Mao here, uh, it's referring to Mao Zedong, the leader of China. It's not the Chinese word for cats, in case some of you are confused. Okay, so Mao is referring to Mao Zedong, and uh, Stalin wanted Mao to take up more of the responsibility in so-called, in Korea, lah, in expanding and spreading communism. Okay, now Stalin was also encouraged by Sino-Soviet Pact when he managed to align with them, and of course this thing that's being underlined here, exclusion of Korea from USA's defense perimeter. So for USA's defense perimeter, it consists of Japan, Philippines, and Taiwan. Okay, so this is what USA actually drew up for this particular area, and these are the key countries for USA. So like I said, USA were never interested in Korea in the first place. And Soviet Union, they were not exactly interested in Korea in the first place as well. But now that they realize that since USA is not interested, they are thinking, hey, why don't we get involved and we try to actually expand communism and establish a communist state in Korea as well. So as a result, Stalin actually sent advisors to train the North Korean People's Army, that's what NKPA stands for, and provided for extensive military equipment. So therefore, the support starts coming in. For South Korea, okay, USA saw the situation as more political than military, so it provided more economic assistance. But they were also very cautious to provide military equipment, as we mentioned before, this Singh Man Ri is not an easy person to deal with. And they did not want to put too many weapons into this crazy guy, otherwise he would start another war in which the USA would be reluctant to get involved in. Now, how did the war actually start? Huh? Okay, now, before the war actually started, right, actually there were some border clashes already. That means to say, like, I poke you, you poke me, you know, I shoot your car, you shoot my tank, that kind of thing. But there wasn't anything official that started the war yet. That's what it means by border clashes. Um... These border clashes were also actually initiated by South Korea. Remember Sing Man Ri? He is crazy. He wanted to start something. All right, and they actually wanted to attack North Korea as well. And so for the USA, they were actually shocked at the aggressiveness of this Sing Man Ri. And they were now even more reluctant to actually support South Korea at all. So if you think back to the question just now, uh, okay, given that USA was actually not very interested in Korea, why did they actually step in to help? Okay, so this is still something for you to continue to think about as I'm finishing up this lecture. Um, now, so by mid-1950, uh, North Korea was actually prepared to invade South Korea as well, since South Korea also wants to attack North Korea and actually invade them. Now, these border skirmishes were actually more or less initiated by uh, South Korea. Okay, if you look at your textbook, page 54, the third paragraph there, Border clashes, these were initiated by the South in an attempt to capture territory in the North. For example, okay, and the given example down there is that in July 1949, South Korean warships actually attacked North Korea military installments at the mouth of the Taedong River and sinking most of North Korea's West Coast fleets. And uh, there was some fighting involved, but like I mentioned, this actually didn't properly start the war by itself. Okay, this tells us that South Korea were pretty aggressive and uh, they are partly responsible as well for the cause of the war. Ah, sorry, another issue for you to think about, what is the main reason that caused the Korean War? Okay, you can think about that as well. Was it the USA who caused it? Was it USSR who caused it? Was it North Korea who caused it? Was it Singh Man Ri who caused it? Okay, possible, all possible factors to argue for what caused the Korean War. Now, so we would regard this up to this point, even though the war haven't properly started, we will regard it still as a civil war, a uh, mecca between North and the South, and it's got nothing to do with uh, USA and USSR, given that both of them are not interested in that area. Okay? So how did it actually develop from a civil war to a proxy war? We're going to be looking at these few factors that actually um, that caused the actual start of the war. Now, so the actual start of the war, we are going to be marking it by this particular date, 25th June 1950, the day when North Korea actually started to invade South Korea. Okay, and uh, that was the day in which actually the Kim Il-sung was the one who actually initiated this invasion 
and he started it on June 1950 and then they basically went into South Korea with the with some aid from Soviet Union as well okay oh yes by the way going back we are going to look at the role of the UN if you look at this uh, this cartoon down here on the right okay the League of Nations uh, died of lack of exercise facing wanton aggression if you can see that here I'm sure you'll be able to see this cartoon I cannot remember somewhere around the textbook I'm not sure exactly where so League of Nations you know they have failed at this point in time to actually be anything useful at all and uh, to prevent history from repeating itself they, the United Nations the replacement for the League of Nations actually do need to step in now and try to do something about uh, Korea's invasion of um, North Korea's invasion of South Korea. So for Soviet Union, they do actually support this particular invasion in terms of uh, military, but the war was actually mainly fought by the Koreans itself. If you watch the, if you had watched the movie Brotherhood, you would know that um, it is mainly Koreans fighting against Koreans. For the core history students, whereas uh, in the case of Vietnam, it would be more of uh, Vietnamese fighting against the Americans. Okay, so it's actually a little bit different in that. Okay, next we're going to look at uh, the entry of the USA into the Korean War to support South Korea. So, uh, because South Korea was invaded by you know North Korea, so and it was invaded by a so-called com in assistance of the communist country, therefore they decided to actually um, step in to help. So for Harry Truman, the President of the United States, huh? okay, he believed that this invasion was influenced by Stalin and the Soviet Union and therefore he needed to step in and to prevent the spread of communism. Okay, This is where I would also introduce to you something called the Domino Theory. Uh, this has already been mentioned to call history students, you should be aware of this. So the Domino Theory is such that they are afraid that if one country falls to communism, the rest of the country would subsequently fall to communism as well. Uh, if you have no idea how dominoes work, can you go search for domino gif? I'm sure you'll be able to find something that's got to do with that. Right? And he also believed that this was a start in Stalin's plan to spread communism to all of Asia. So basically, right, when North Korea invaded South Korea, Harry Truman believed that it was the work of Stalin who actually instigated the, 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 the invasion. But we will look at some of the sources for SBQ and you realize that that might not necessarily be true. It could be really Kim Il-sung's doing all alone. Okay, so now the USA did not actually get involved alone and it got the help of the UN. So the United Nations is supposed to prevent things like this from happening, right? Just as the League of Nations was supposed to prevent Hitler from starting World War II. So the UN stepped in and they sent a joint force to assist South Korea to drive the North Korean People's Army back into North Korea. However, one thing to take note of, most of the UN forces here were primarily made up of American forces. So yes, we say that officially on paper, it is actually the UN who stepped in to stop them, but it was actually, in truth, it was more of uh, the American soldiers who actually did step in to... Okay, apologies, huh? I have some trouble here. Okay, it was the American soldiers who actually uh, who were more involved in this particular war. Okay, at this point in time, I also want you to turn to your textbooks, uh, page 44, and they would have mention of this thing called the NSC 68. Okay, it's found in the middle of the textbook. This NSC 68, National Security Council, um, it was a top secret report that was made in April 1950. So the invasion was June. 1950 but in April 1950 there was actually this report from the USA already and they were actually uh, talking about the possibility of Stalin being aggressive and Soviet Union being aggressive in trying to spread communism to the rest of the countries and emphasize the need for them to actually counter this uh, aggressiveness and to stop them from doing so. Um, of course this report wouldn't exactly be something so accurate as to correctly say that Stalin was absolutely involved because as we look at the sources as we will be looking at the sources you will realize that mm, Stalin actually didn't really want to be involved in this Korean War to such a huge extent uh. he's a bit wavering here and there it cannot be certain so but nevertheless this report actually influenced the decisions of the American leaders and they therefore made the decision to be prepared for anything that happens and the invasion did happen in June and therefore they had to try to stop them Okay, I'll pause here.
Okay, I keep getting interrupted while recording this in school. Okay, so we need to pause here and move on to the second part of the lecture in the next one.